Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everybody here to our worship uh, service this morning. It's a, it's a beautiful sunny day. We had some quite a bit of rain on Thursday afternoon and uh, Friday. Uh, inches, I know, but I don't know how many inches. Uh, but uh, that's, that's great. We'll take, the, we'll take the rain. Grass is growing. Anybody need a yard to mow? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm talking about mine. <laughs> but I had intentions of mowing. Uh, this one is in good shape. Mine needs mowing. Let's <laughs> give me some idea. Well, I'll get that taken care of. Um, uh, Jared's a little, uh, bit under the weather, so I'll be our song leader this morning. I didn't get them put up, but I, I'll announce them as we go. Uh, that way y'all will be surprised and even more surprised with me leading them. So uh, y'all, y'all, y'all help me out all that you can. Uh, things we need to, uh, now you need to remember uh, in our prayer list, uh, Dylan uh, Brown, and he's the son of a friend of Regina's that's on the hospice, a young man, and uh, we need to keep him and his family all in our, our prayers. Uh, yeah, he, put cards out on the table, his heart is this way. His birthday's this week. Okay. So please stop by after our worship service and sign those cards. And uh, um, and uh, as you uh, as you leave this uh, morning or this uh, after our service, if you could please. Also, uh, Gary announced last week he had a good friend that had been diagnosed with uh, third uh, stage three pancreatic cancer that's inoperable. Um, uh, Craig House, and we need to keep that him and his family in our in our prayers. Also, uh, let's see. Uh, we also need to remember the twenty third will be potluck. This is a five uh, uh, Sunday month, so it kind of sneaks up on us a little bit earlier. And our, uh, <laughs> our speaker that day will be Danny Parrish from the uh, Southern. Uh, uh, Christian uh, Children's Home there in Morrill, and uh, so uh, please get that. Uh, keep that in mind. And be here to hear the message Danny's prepared. He's going to talk some about the work um, that they're doing there, what they've got going on for the young people that they're there to help. But then he's also going to uh, give us our uh, our message Sunday morning. So uh, so be aware of that on the twenty twenty third. Um, we don't have any birthdays or anniversaries uh, to, be, to speak of. Again, uh, Jared's under the weather. Mark's our speaker uh, today, and uh, Kevin will be our speaker next Sunday. And uh, so uh, be aware of those things. Is there anything else? Yeah, Mark. Do we have a meeting after the service? Oh, thank you. Thank you. How, how, how quickly I forget. We're going to have just a short five minute. Uh, Kevin's going to lead it, not me. That way we ensure it's a short five minute meeting. And um, uh, just to kind of talk about some things that we're going to do as a, as a congregation and get y'all's uh, involvement in y'all's thoughts, if you have any, uh, for those, what we're going to propose. And uh, also, uh, then uh, you can. Let us know anything there if you want, or you can catch one of us after or at some other time uh, if you want to discuss it uh, further. And uh, so, 
So be aware, this this is a short, uh, quick meeting uh, after after our worship service. Uh, so if you can, please please stay. Uh, is there anything else uh, that we need to be aware of uh, this morning? If not, if you would please uh, turn your song books to number one hundred and forty four. Number 144. Everybody please sing. Oh, worship the King of glory
us pray. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all of us coming together to praise you and worship you as we are commanded to do on the first day of the week. Father God, I ask that we please take this sermon and we apply it to our everyday lives and we use it to better ourselves and to be a shining light to this community. Please guide, guard, and direct and protect us the remainder of this service. Forgive us whenever we fail you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm before communion this morning is number 349. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verses without the chorus, and on the last verse we'll sing the chorus, please. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden way. humans are so forgetful and we get tied up in our everyday lives that we forget to the great sacrifice that your son made for us so at this time we take time out to 
contemplate what that means for each and every one of us. Forgiveness of sins, the hope of the resurrection, and the life to come. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning to partake of this Lord's Supper. We ask that you uh, bless us on love and bread as it represents his body that he gave up for us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, we come to you this time to ask you to please and bless us through the vine which represents Christ which has shed blood for us, never stayed in the manner of bleeding to our side. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Would please um, mark your uh, handles for song number 904. Number 904. That will be our invitation song after the message this morning. And then, if you would, turn back to number 528. Number 528. It's convenient for you. Please uh, stand for this. <coughs> I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life He gives from sin and sorrow.
I had a meeting and we had already decided that we were going to speak to you this morning uh, right after the lesson. So I thought to myself, well, I may need to make it short. Well, it may be short. It may be around 10 minutes. <laughs> but uh, I want to, uh, to ask you the question, do you look forward to heaven? I do. I do. I look forward to heaven. You know, there are three things that uh, are most uh, universally about heaven. Most people believe in it, and they want to go there, and they want to know more about it. So, I mean, is heaven real? Of course it's real. It's real. That's where Christ came from. That's where our Heavenly Father is the Bible. That's where Christ sits in the right hand seat of God. Heaven is not a, pr a product of our imagination. We know that. God made us and placed us within a in the desire for heaven. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. The modern day speech translation it has Simon saying God has placed eternity in the heart of all mankind. You see, God has given us the hope of heaven. Something better than in this life. God has sent God has set life after life within the human heart. We, we find this instinct is longer, this longing, this hoping, in every major civilization where they have a, geo, a Judeo Christian background or not. Why is that? Because God placed eternity in our hearts. This is just the way he made us. He wants us to be with him. As we should want to be with him. The Bible speaks to us of heaven. It affirms our belief in life after death. In Job 1, the old book of the Bible poses this question on the uh, if a man dies, will he live again? Of course, the answer is yes, he will. In John 14, 2, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for and he's telling us how to get there. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Paul writes, For you know it is the earthly dwelling will dissolve when we have a building of God, a house, of, a, house a home not made with hands eternal in the heaven. Well, what can we expect? What is heaven like? Christ said, as I read here, in my Father's house are many mansions. Does God live in a house? Is it our place in heaven, a mansion? No, Jesus simply describing the grandest thing our human mind can comprehend. Heaven is a desire. Heaven is described as a city in Hebrews. The Hebrew writer along with John in the book of Revelation refers to heaven as a city. Abraham was said to be searching for the city, for a city. 
Heaven is a holy city. And New Jerusalem. The ideal from the scriptures is that heaven is a con is a community of believers. A fellowship of a fellowship of the God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit and angels, a family that is saved. The Holy Spirit is speaking of relationships, a relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the angels and saved of ages past and saved of our family. Friendship circle. And indeed, what a, fe a fellowship, what a community, what a city. That's where I want to be. How about you? Heaven is home. Jesus speaks of uh, heaven as a place in the uh, where the Father's house is, a place in the Father. Home is where loved ones are, where they're secure. Home becomes a refuge. The word home imparts a sense of belonging. Now the dwelling of God is with men. He will live with them. They will be his people and, and God be their God. And they see his face, his name, will be on their foreheads at home with God. That's where I want to be. And that's where we all should want to be. Heaven is a place of eternal joy and happiness. You hear this, this in many scriptures in the Bible, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. Come share in the joy of your Lord. Heaven will be a joy because he will wipe away our tears. There is no more, so there is no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain or death or separation. The old order of things are passed away. Behold, all things are in the made new. And heaven is sinless. Heaven is a place of life, an economy where sinning is over, symbolizing and represented by white robes. Nothing will enter it that defiles or causes an abomination of a lie. Only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to be one of those people, don't you? And in heaven is the presence with God. We will see his face. We'll see God as he really is. Face to face. If we gasp and all and all his creation at his handiwork in this world. Just think, what will it be like to see face to face? If we shudder in the shat in the shadow, think about what will happen when we see the reality of God and what he has prepared for us in heaven. Eyes has not seen, ears has not heard, neither has it entered into the mind of man what God has in store for us at home forever in heaven. And heaven is the time. Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. I will go, I will come again so that where I am there you may be also. 
Peter says we can we can make our calling and the election sure. John assures us. I write to you these things so that you may know that you have eternal life. Read in uh, Mark 16, 15, and 16. So we see what we need to do. We see what Christ said that we had to do. We had to believe in Him. We had to be. We had to believe that He was the Son of God. We had to obey Him. We had to be baptized for the remission of our sin. That's what He told the disciples to do, and that is what we are to do, just as we do in some and the our foreign missions as I think of it's gone as one but there are some that ask well what do we need to do Acts 2 and 38 says this if you want to turn with me there go back to uh, Acts 2 and 36. Therefore, let all of the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? When Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And on 39, it also goes on down to say, and this is a covering us, for the promise is for you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So are you ready to go to heaven? I'm ready to go to heaven. We know how to get there. We do everything that this Bible says right here. What Christ has told us in this Bible and follow the examples of the of the uh, apostles. We know how to get there. Is there anyone here this morning that needs baptized this morning for the remission of sins? If not, the water is red. If there are some here that has fallen away and you need prayers at this congregation, this time you can do so as we stand in the sun. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood In the blood, in the blood. 
hymnal to number uh, 709. Number 709. How sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord in one another's peace delight and so fulfill the word when each can fill his brother's sigh and with this morning and we do pray that what our service here has been pleasing to you in accordance to your will we want to uh, offer up a prayer for all of those that are on our prayer list whatever the needs may be we pray for them we pray for the families of those that are in need we pray that they could be restored if that to their good health if that or whatever their issues may be and that their family can be comforting in trial trying times. We are so thankful to have had this opportunity to be able to come here this morning understanding there are many in this world that do not have that privilege. Help us to never take it for granted. Help us to always be your herald to those around about us of the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know we fail you in many ways. We we stumble, we fall. We ask you to please forgive us. Please pick us up. Please guide our steps in everything that we do. And we pray all of this in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>